Um, okay, in the, in, uh, the 49,000 acres of the cottonwood burn, uh, the actual cottonwood burn itself in 1994, many of the, much of the acreage, it was the third time that those acres had burned in major fires, large wildfires since the 1950s. And uh, it's an indicator, and also stump, uh, looking at fire scars and historical uh, measurements of uh, fire return intervals. We're looking at about a seven to 15 year range of a fire burning out here every seven to 15 years. So uh, in 1994, we're at uh, 95, uh, we're, I mean, we're at uh, 2007, we're getting real close. We're in the range of another, of another big fire out here already. And we have not dealt with the problem that, uh, that we have. You know, some people say uh, let nature take its course is natural, but when fires were more frequent, we didn't get 49,000 acre fires that killed so many trees. We did get 49,000 acre fires, but there was a, the, the mortality, the tree mortality was a lot more spotty. And there would be pockets that certainly that would die and be killed, but not the vast acreages that we were killed in the cottonwood fire. So it's, a, it's an issue that uh, the ecosystem is out of balance. Bringing back a fire resilient forest here would help put it back into a condition that, that would be more, uh, more in balance with uh, the historical uh, uh, references. All right, my name's Scott Conway. I am a forester. I work on the east side of the Tahoe National Forest, which covers uh, from Sierraville to Truckee, and out here to explain some of the things we're doing out here on the uh, Cottonwood Fire Restoration Project. Um, as I was showing you earlier, trying to walk through all the brush, this is real similar to that area as far as the composition of the trees. Although the brush has been masticated, so it's uh, obviously a lot easier to walk through. But you can kind of get a better idea of, of what the trees left over are looking like. And uh, this was masticated a couple years ago, or actually this last summer. And so really the trees haven't had a chance to release at all. And uh, they will get a couple years head start uh, with the release from the, the brush. But as the brush comes back, it will, again, compete for the resources of this tree, particularly with moisture. And uh, these trees will probably survive, but they have a long road ahead of them. So the way you can see how a tree is growing is between what's called the whorls. And in between these whorls is, shows a year's growth. And in this tree, we've had some not so good years. We probably got two or three inches of growth here probably got four or five inches of growth here, maybe six inches of growth here. Uh, so not really good growth. Um, the other thing to notice on this tree is the lack of girth or the radial growth that it has or doesn't have. Uh, without much competition, this tree would be not only twice as, as wide, but also twice as tall. And we're hoping the release that we did with the mastication will give it a, a couple more uh, inches of growth here and a couple more inches of growth uh, radially. But uh, it's going to need a lot more help if it's going to establish itself uh, to shade out the rest of the vegetation to make it a fire resistant stand. So th this, is the, this is the reason why these plants are uh, so uh, such an issue for us and, and this is it's a what call it's called an epicormic shrub and what that means essentially in layman terms is that it's a sprouting shrub and it's able to sprout because there's dormant buds that lie in what's called this root burl. And these dormant buds only get released after a hormonal flow is disrupted from the severing of the top part of the vegetative portion of the plant. And so once that hormonal flow is disrupted, these buds are released and there's actually carbohydrates stored in this root burl that then supply the buds that are getting released and uh, continue to supply those buds until they're able to, to photosynthesize on their own and start making nourishment for the plant. Uh, unfortunately, because these burls are so low and almost into the ground, they're impossible to treat mechanically and will therefore survive. Uh, the only way to really kill these plants is uh, through the use of, of herbicides.